I would like to consider this question of, is the cost of university worth the value that we're getting today? And I kind of want to do so in 140 characters or less, because my millennial mind can only think in tweets. Uh, how I want to uh, contextualize this discussion is with my experience as an undergrad in business school. I'm just graduating back in May, so I can't necessarily speak of the entire university experience. Um, but how I would like to start is with a quote that I have held on to since my freshman year of high school, um, partly to keep my sanity. And this quote is uh, by Mark Twain, and he says, never let schooling interfere with your education. Um, and a at first, this seems a bit paradoxical, because we kind of think of schooling as equivalent to education. Um, but in my experience, uh, they couldn't be further apart. Um, schooling is the academic uh, component of you know, a university or a, a education, whereas education is all of the experiences that go into making you the person who you are, sh shaping your perspective, shaping your outlook on life, um, who you are and what you proceed to do. Um, so I, I, I want to first think about the schooling component and ask the question, is the cost of tuition of university worth the schooling or academic component that we're getting? Um, and you know, President Sexton might not like this because my next tweet is about to be a, a declarative statement. Um, but what I think here is that our digital models are providing equal, if not greater, value for our academic components of, of university um, at a fraction of the cost. That oftentimes we can find more effective teachers, we can find more effective assessments, we can find more effective feedback mechanisms, um, and a network than we can in a university kind of setting. But what I would go on to kind of think about now is what a true education comprises of. And to me, this was the experiences that I've had over four years here at NYU. Um, so I'm going to draw quickly upon three experiences that I've had that have shaped who I am um, and where I am today. Um, and the first was my experience to study abroad. And I say here that students shouldn't be allowed to graduate without studying abroad. Um, and this is something that after me and my friends went abroad, we kind of you know, jokingly say this. And while study abroad was, you know, it, it was a lot of fun, it was much less work than you might find here uh, in, at NYU, um, we found that it was an instrumental time for us to kind of take a step back from the academic kind of thinking or, or doing more than thinking atmosphere here, and taking a step back saying, you know, what are we really doing? What is our goal in kind of college? What is the outcome? Where do we expect to see ourselves in five years? Um, and these were the discussions that were kind of facilitated as we were in a kind of freer environment, um, exploring and traveling the world together. Um, a second thing that came out of study abroad that was tremendously valuable were some of the ideas and uh, discussions that we had in class. Um, and our professors raised certain questions that kind of lingered in our minds as we traveled you know, throughout, throughout Europe and our time um, studying abroad. And you know, kind of looking back now today, um, I think we all say that our study abroad experience was instrumental in shaping our perspectives um, and you know, the kind of decisions that we made thereforth uh, after coming back to, to uh, New York. The second experience that I want to draw upon, um, and it's funny here because I, I call it a class, um, and I say that classes that motivate students beyond a grade with tangible real world outcomes inspire some of the most effective learning. And I want to think of this more as a model. And what this model was, uh, was a, a model that I experienced my junior year in Stern. And this was a model called ISP. And what we had here was the students were assigned a international company that they would go visit over their spring break. And then they would come back and they would do their analysis and come up with some type of strategic recommendations for this business. What you found when you spoke to these students is that ISP soon became one of their hardest classes, but one of the classes that they spent the most time on, working on this presentation and, and working on these recommendations. And it, it made me wonder that, you know, this is only a three or four credit class. It's the same as all of your other classes. Um, you, you know, you're getting a grade at the end of the day. So why were students taking, putting so much effort into this? Why were they learning so much from this class? And what I found was the motivator extended beyond just a grade in this class. The motivator here was if you did the best in your class, you then had the option to present in front of your entire, uh, you know, audience of peers or your entire student class of 500 students. 
Um, so here, for those students who are interested in going into consulting or going into a more strategic role, um, this was a chance for them to do really well and then look back and speak to future employers and say, kind of as a portfolio piece, um, this is the kind of strategic recommendation. This was the problem that we identified with this company. Um, and this is the kind of value that we found. And you know, we ended up winning this competition. So that was one motivator. Uh, the second motivator was that the teachers told us that if our recommendations were good enough, they would filter up to the company. So the prospect of having your idea go all the way up to the company um, really motivated these students to engage deeply with the type of uh, concepts and constraints that we had for this class and their ultimate recommendations. The, the third kind of experience that I want to draw upon that has kind of been instrumental uh, in my, I guess, educational experience has been, again, it was a course, but I don't want to call it a course because there's no classes or assignments or lectures as we traditionally think of, um, but it was more of a model. And this was taught uh, by a venture capitalist by the name of Lawrence Lenahan. Um, and he came in and he basically said, each week I'm going to bring in an you know, investor or entrepreneur and they're going to talk to you and they're going to inspire you. Um, but the goal for this class, the end project, um, I want you guys to break off into teams. I want you to identify a solution and come up with a, uh, identify a problem and come up with a solution. And if your solution is good, if it gains traction, if I like what you're doing, I will invest my salary in you. I will give you $13,000 as a seed, sta <laughs> seed stage investment. Um, so you can bet that that semester, every other academic obligation that we had fell to the wayside because not only, you know, there wasn't a grade at the end of this class, but there was the potential to be vetted by a seasoned venture capitalist um, that could provide indefinite rewards into the future. Um, so this kind of incentive structure motivated s us students to get together, to kind of put our other priorities and our other academic obligations aside and say, hey, you know, let's start working on some problem. Let's identify a solution. And by the end of the course, um, you saw that you know, despite the quality of the ideas or you know, what people built, that seven out of 10 teams um, actually built a product to a solution that they, to, to a problem that they saw. Um, and this was instrumental in getting them to just take that first leap of faith, saying, hey, let's get together with you know, five or six of these other people and let's start working on something that could provide you know, tremendous rewards coming into the future. Uh, so these were three experiences that were instrumental in shaping you know, my, what I consider to be my educational experience here um, at NYU. What universities are in a unique position to compete on is the value of the experiences they provide. And going forward in the future, how, to what depth and to what value can they provide such experiences? Thank you very much.